Hey everyone, this is Paul, and in this video, what I'm going to do is talk about the argument from evil for the existence of God. Now, most people are used to seeing the argument from evil presented in the way to try to argue against the existence of God, but some theists are actually able to take this argument and turn it around and say, no, actually the existence of evil points to the existence of good and points to the existence of God as the source of this good. That's kind of the gist of this argument. So I'll give it in three forms. Um, the most basic form goes like this. Premise one, if God does not exist, objective moral values and duties do not exist. Premise two, evil exists. Premise three, therefore, objective moral values and duties exist. This is very similar to William Lane Craig's version of the moral argument for the existence of God, except this way it's actually risking on evil or using evil to demonstrate the existence of objective moral values and duties. One way you can argue this is if objective evil exists, then one has an objective duty to avoid evil or to go after good, which in some ways could be, you can frame it as the absence of evil, you can frame it as something in, a, in and of itself that's bad. Um, there are different ways to look at this. Uh, there's, I don't know, people have debated about this a lot, but all that matters, right? It, it doesn't matter what what the technicality of evil is. All it is is there, there's stuff that one ought to avoid, one ought not to do, and one and stuff that Therefore, you know, one ought to do. And as a result, one has objective moral values and duties, and therefore God exists if God grounds these things. Now, I think the difficulty in this argument, um, yeah, I, you know, I, I think this is, a, this is an interesting argument. It's a fun argument, and, and I think it, it does work if you accept premise one. And I think many people, the, the skeptics and atheists, are going to push back on premise one. Now, as a theist, I find that the many skeptics and atheists who try to ground objective moral values and duties outside of God, especially if they're naturalists, it looks completely like special pleading to me. But in the context of this argument, the theist has the burden of proof to show that if God does not exist, objective moral values and duties do not exist. And there are multiple ways you can do this. One of the ways in which you can do is just say, God is the greatest good by definition. So if God is a necessary being and is necessarily good, um, you can use some sort of version of the ontological argument, something like that. You can therefore say, you know, if evil exists, then, then good must exist. Good could be the, you know, the good thing in and of itself, and evil is the absence of this. I think, I think Aquinas was on that road, but um, there are other people who had different, different conceptions of this. So that would be the main premise to defend. I think the, the difficulty is showing that there's a logical inconsistency in premise one, rather than saying God is the best explanation for objective moral values and duties, and therefore making a sort of evidential case. If we believe in objective moral values and duties, it makes sense to believe in God, or God probably exists, that sort of thing, rather than necessarily saying they're not compatible at all, because one could at least think up possible ways. Once again, I don't necessarily know that these are good explanations, but one could at least say, well, you know, you could, you could, you have room to doubt premise one is basically what I'm, what I'm trying to say. So the next version of this argument tries to go a little bit deeper and it goes like this. This is kind of my simplified version. Premise one, if prescriptive good and evil statements are ontologically and epistemically sound, God exists. So what this means here, <laughs> lots of big words, if prescriptive good and evil statements, if there are things that are good and evil, if those things need to exist, that's the ontological part, like good must exist, God, evil must exist, you can say Satan or the absence of God, there can be a lot of ways you can do this, um, and epistemically sound, it's not just enough for these things to exist, we need to have some sort of justification for coming to know them, how is it the case that we have our own moral compasses that point in the right direction sometimes. We have some sort of, you know, truth tracking process in the same ways that we think that our eyes generally reveal truth around the world when we see things. Of course, it doesn't need to be perfect, but it has to be generally reliable. Some people say in accordance with some sort of design plan, so to speak. If that's the case, God exists, <laughs> evil exists. And then here's the part evil exists. This is the ontological piece. We have knowledge of evil. It's not enough to just propose that evil exists. We have to come to know it. That would be premise three. That's the epistemic part, you can argue we have a sense of evil, we just know some things are wrong a priori, kind of like a priori truths. Therefore, God exists because we have knowledge of evil and we assume evil exists. But both evil has to exist and we have to how, somehow come to know it. And I think people sometimes do try to do one or the other and they mix these two up. But for, once again, knowledge, you need at least, at least justified true belief. So, you know, true, it exists. Justification, maybe warrant, maybe some sort of external justification piece. Uh, don't want to get too far in the weeds here, but that's kind of the, the version of this argument. And then you can make a more sophisticated version of this argument. And this is where I would go um, if I was really trying to hammer this point home and, and make the strongest case possible if I was talking to my, you know, philosopher friends or something like that. 
I actually don't have a lot of philosopher friends. Um, but if I, if I did, this is the way I would put it. Uh, premise one, to move from human nature as it is to human nature as it ought to be, or sort of, which is good, or ought not to be evil. So to make prescriptive sort of statements beyond just how human nature is, um, we must have knowledge of teleology. And what is knowledge? It's at least justified true belief. So it must be true and we must have justification. I'm trying to avoid the Gettier problem. So I'm not saying these things are, are sufficient, but I'm saying they're at least necessary, right? To have knowledge of teleology, teleology must exist and must be justified. So this is taking Plato's idea, justified true belief. So it's at least necessary. God is the source of teleology. This is premise three. By his nature, and I say the AAA condition, this isn't the, the car going car towing company. Um, by AAA, it was Augustine, Aquinas, and Anselm, Anselm, who the three of those actually all thought that God's nature was basically the source of good. So this goes back, you know, over 1500 years ago, these, these debates were going on, uh, people were proposing these sorts of things, it's not a new thing. Um, and of course, this is engaging with things like the Euthyphro dilemma and such. So premise three would then say God solves the existence piece, the ontological piece. Premise four, God provides justification for our knowledge of these oughts. So this allows the, the knowledge not only to be true, but it allows the knowledge itself to be justified because we you could say God allows the Holy Spirit or some sort of thing to overcome our conscience. So we know, you can say this goes all the way back if you're, if you're like a biblical Christian, all the way back to Genesis, knowledge of good and evil, these sorts of things. Like, like we literally have this um, and this makes sense. This is a coherent thing with God. And as a result... Um, we have ought not knowledge. And as a result, if we have knowledge of evil, that means there must be some source of how this thing exists and some justification. God provides both of those, therefore God exists if we take it that we have ought not knowledge or the ought sorts of knowledge. Um, so you can use the existence of evil. This is the sort of teleological way of doing it and to actually argue for the existence of God. Um, I can, I'll change this argument. You can make this argument into an actual teleological moral argument for God as well based on knowledge of good, but this way you can also do it in terms of knowledge of evil as well. So uh, yeah, thanks, thanks for watching and uh, hope you found this interesting. Let me know uh, about it in the comments. Kind of, a, kind of an interesting argument, right? Taking the problem of evil and actually using it as an argument for theism, which is totally, totally possible. And the way I'll say, the last thing actually I'll say is the way you're able to do this is because this evil that exists is not the type of gratuitous evil that God would, that would be incompatible with God's existence, right? Evil exists, some evil that basically we know ought not to be that brings us into basically a deeper knowledge or understanding of God or something like that. Um, if this, if it was gratuitous evil exists, this argument would not work. So yeah, I just wanted to put that there. Anyway, thanks for watching.